The handheld consoles have always been a hit for Nintendo. Almost every single one they made did amazing. The Game & Watch, Game Boy, DS and many more. But today we're going to take a look at a game that was released on the best selling handheld ever, which sold a whopping 154 million. For this handheld console, they made a very special Zelda game, which was a direct sequel to The Wind Waker. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass was extremely popular, especially in Japan, which resulted in spirit tracks being made. However, there are also some things left behind in the files that were never used. There's one unused map in the files and some other interesting things. And that's what we're going to look at today. First up, the map. It's called Player DNGN and contains four unused rooms. The rooms can be accessed in a PAL version with action replay codes that change which room is loaded when Link enters a door. Let's start by looking at the first one. It features the main entrance, several entrances in each corner, and a teleporter. The blue teleporter and the invisible teleporter at the bottom right lead back to the room itself, while the main entrance leads to the Great Sea. The bottom right exit and the bombable wall in the top right corner lead to room 2, but both are glitched. Unless this wall hasn't been bombed, trying to return to room 1 from room 2 will cause Link to constantly spawn inside the door, sending him back to room 2. Another bombable wall in the top left corner leads to room 4. On an elevated platform are three doors for the main dungeon. Each one corresponds to a spirit traveling with Link, and all are functional. Trying to use the sun gate, which requires the sun key from the sunken chest, causes the game to violently crash. Besides that, there are also a lot of random things you can interact with, like levers and rocks. There is also an event trigger, which hangs the game. Located on the right side of the area are the bridge Link encounters just before the first final boss form, and many stakes which can be stood on or grappled. On the floor can be seen a force gem panel and a panel for Oshis's cave, but riding 7 on it doesn't have any effect. So essentially they don't function like they do in the game. They don't do anything. The wildlife in this area consists of octo rocks and keys. Fortunately, it features some safe zones from the main dungeon with their familiar red pots. There's also a small room with a locked door and a chest inside, the latter of which is empty when opened. Clearly, this room is filled with a ton of stuff and the only thing that makes sense is for this to be a room to test all kinds of features. For example, if the bombable walls function properly, which they clearly don't in this version, or if the levers work properly. A lot of games have rooms like this. For example, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker has multiple rooms to test stuff like swimming, jumping, doors and more. This room contains mostly things you can interact with by the looks of it. So let's have a look at the other rooms and see what their themes are. In the second room, there are multiple ways to get to any of the other rooms just like the first one. However, there are no enemies around this time. Some of the features of this room are oddly textured with water, safe zones from the main dungeon and other stuff. To the south of the area above the water are interspaced floors which may have been used for testing Link's auto jump. There is also a non-functional switch, an odd untextured object and a closed door, but we aren't sure what the use of this stuff was. Using cheats to traverse the room reveals a winding path with a small staircase and two more lowered iron doors. To the east is a small bridge which leads to two switches that make the doors raise up normally high when Link stands on them, but lower once he dismounts. At the end of the path is a cracked wall. Using a bomb on it makes the puzzle solved sound and raises the last gate indefinitely. Now for the third room. It's a wide area with a locked door leading to nothing in particular, which is a bit strange. It also boasts an elevated platform with some pillars, scattered about stairs and even two abnormally high staircases which lead nowhere, causing Link to fall off at the end. Also, there are some warps in the room that lead to the corners of room 1. Towards the northern of the area is an invisible platform that is positioned slightly out of bounds and in the southern portion of the room are two semi-closed square areas, each with a pot and one force gem in a buggy chest on the right. A third completely closed square can also be found nearby, but yet again a room filled with a ton of strange things. The warps kind of make sense, since some of the bombable walls that connect the rooms are very buggy. This room seems to be for testing all kinds of things you can walk on, however it's huge for no good reason really. 
Most of the space in the room is empty and it's very unorganized, just like all the other rooms. And the last room is just a copy of the third room. Why? Well, we have no idea and it really doesn't make sense. If you look at the test rooms from the Wind Waker, then you can see that they look way better. Everything is easy to find and see in one glance. Not sure how Nintendo did testing for this game, but this really looks messy. Now to finish this video off, we will look at an early map of the first island in the game, Murkay Island. It lacks both houses and cave entrances. Oddly, it fits perfectly with the entrance to the first dungeon and the temple. So this is most likely an early version where they didn't add any of the houses and caves yet. Besides that, they also added some small things here and there, and also moved some stuff around. For example, the small river in the middle, which served as a plot point in the game, since the bridge was broken at one point, isn't there in this early version. They probably added this later on, so that you couldn't go to the main part of the town that way. Besides that, they changed some small stuff like the heights of certain areas, and by the looks of it, the town was supposed to be up here instead of down there. We aren't sure why they made this change, but it could be because of the water and bridge that was later on placed to the left side of the town. So Phantom Hourglass has some weird stuff in the files, and not all of it really makes sense. But now you at least know what lingers in there. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to watch more videos, click the annotations on the screen right now. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button, because then you won't miss any videos, so only more fun will be coming your way!